Hi, it's Reagan Cipher. Today, we're going to break away from the norm a little bit and take a look at Halu's new smart wearable release, the Solar Plus RT3. Having seen my review on their Perfri BC01 bone conduction headphones, Halu very kindly got in touch and asked me if I'd like to take a look at this sample and review it accordingly. This is not something I typically get involved with, but there's no agendas, there's no affiliate links, and they haven't steered this review in any way. Rest assured, this isn't turning into a tech channel, but in my spare time, I do a lot of mixed sports, a lot of running and a lot of cycling. So this is one area I'm particularly interested in, I have quite a bit of experience in it as well. So I was more than happy to make an exception, step away from the TWS for one review and take a look at this new product. Enough of me waffling, let's get on with the review of the Halu Solar Plus RT3. Halu are probably better known for their TWS earbuds and some of their other smart wearables like the bone conduction headphones we mentioned in the intro. However, that hasn't stopped them from going into smartwatches in a big way. The Solar Plus RT3 certainly isn't their first, but it's probably their most feature rich so far. It's certainly their most impressive screen so far. The 1.43 inch 466 by 466 AMOLED display is one of the highlights. There's an inbuilt microphone and speaker allowing you to make and take phone calls. They've upped their number of sports modes to over 100. There's a host of health tracking options, including SpO2, sleep tracking, and continuous heart rate monitoring. There's also integration with Google Fit, although not Strava, and it also doesn't have GPS built in, and there's no NFC for contactless payments. Even so, still lots to get excited about, and at that sub $50 mark where they're competing, generally against fitness bands, definitely worth a closer look to see if the real life performance is as good as what it offers on paper. Whilst unboxing the Perfree Bone Conduction headphones was very much a premium affair, the slightly more modest experience you get with the Solar Plus RT3 is perhaps more reflective of their competitive price tag. Retailing at around $50 through AliExpress, this is competing with the likes of the Xiaomi Mi Band 7, the Huawei Band 7, the Amazfit Band 5, and from a features perspective, probably something like the Realme Watch 2. Halu proudly boasts their key features on the back of the box, including a 1.43 inch 466 by 466 resolution AMOLED display, extensive health management sensors, including real-time heart rate monitoring and SpO2 tracking, an impressive array of over 100 workout modes, emotion and stress test sensors, menstrual cycle tracking, and the ability to take calls courtesy of the inbuilt mic and speaker. Whilst it appears black is the only color choice on release, the notation sticker on the top of the box suggests that this will be available in more colors going forward. The watch itself is carefully packaged away inside another box and then held in place with a foam insert. There's a screen protector on there which mimics one of the watch faces built into the watch itself. Other than that you've got a proprietary charge cable and a user manual which is only in English and Chinese although the watch itself operates in something like 13 different languages. With smart wearables you don't tend to get a huge amount of accessories. The holding force on the charge cable is a little bit disappointing. I wish it had a little bit more force because sometimes it could come off charge quite easily if you've got it lying around on a sofa or something like that. A stand-up charging cable would definitely be beneficial for future releases. Despite the limitation on languages, the user manual is actually pretty clear. The language is straightforward and they use diagrams to pretty good effect too. Most of the setup is done through the Halo Fun app. There's a QR code in the manual which takes you straight through to a link where you can be taken to either the Google Play Store or the App Store if you have an iOS device. We'll take a look at pairing and setup straight after we have a look at the build quality. Initial impressions of the watch is that it's quite a large case, although the build quality seems pretty good. The 1.43 inch display of 2.5D curved glass is nice and large, gives you plenty of area to view your notifications and use the UI. And the case, nicely curved lugs and that thin bezel all out of a brush metallic finish. On the one side, you've got the two crowns, the top one being a rocker. It gives you a nice little click when you turn it, although you don't get a haptic response. 
In the middle on the plastic rear side you've got the mic and on the other side the speakers for those call functions which we mentioned in the beginning. Battery connectors are at the top and the sensors are in the middle. As we mentioned in the last section that connection between the charge cable and the watch itself can be a little bit flimsy so be careful where you're placing it. I've been testing the watch for about three weeks now. I've been using it on outdoor runs and bike rides and in the gym and considering the bashing it's had it stood up to the test pretty well. The watch has also been drenched. We've had snow and torrential rain here in the UK the last few weeks and whilst it is IP68 certified Halo do not recommend that you take it swimming or any activities that involve you being submerged. The distance between the lugs is 22mm and the strap comes with a quick release function. The silicone strap that the watch comes with is soft and pretty comfortable although it is made for those with larger wrists. My wrists are about six and a half inches and I'm on the second shortest hole. If you've got skinnier wrists than that I would be careful because the way that it tucks in the bottom might mean it's a little bit uncomfortable. The 466 by 466 AMOLED panel is one of the headline features. Screen is vivid, it's very bright and it has good colour rendition. Whilst the refresh rate is up to 60Hz, bear in mind that's only up to and this is only in the notifications and menu screens it can lag ever so slightly in other areas. And battery life is mostly defined by the display. Excessive raise to wake or AOD usage can decimate your battery heavily. Halo advertised seven to 20 days. I elect to put raise to wake on schedule, switch off the AOD and use the sensors heavily, but still get around 14 days. So my big tip is turn those two features off and you should still be able to use the band for a decent amount of time without having to charge it again. The brightness and the color rendition on that screen is fantastic. So far you've seen the watch only really with just over half the level of brightness. Ramp the brightness up and the screen looks even better. Even when you switch the lights out you're getting great color rendition and clarity from the screen. I've mostly had square smartwatches previously. I did have the Amazfit GTR and I can tell you the colors on this pop far more than that did. I've seen some reviews of Halo smartwatches in the past complaining it's a bit of a rigmarole setting your watch up with your phone for the first time. And whilst I can see where they're coming from, I don't think that's exclusive to Halo. It seems to be pretty much every smartwatch with Android. Going through and allowing permissions and doing stuff like pinning the app so it's got unlimited battery usage is somewhat annoying, but it's exactly the same with Hey Melody with Oppo's devices and for Xiaomi devices with all their different apps as well. My only real complaint is once you've gone through the process of scanning the QR code and installing the app, unless it immediately picks the watch up, and I've seen it on some reviews that it does, but it certainly didn't with mine, then you're left fumbling around trying to find what to do next. Tip for me, go to the me section in the bottom right hand corner and then tap on add device and then find the Solar Plus and it should all run smoothly from there. From there, it's just the same as any other smartwatch. You're just following the instructions, both in the app and the device. And thankfully, it set itself up no problems first time. Once it's completed, you'll get a notification saying pairing successful on both the device and the app. The wizard will then take you through a few selections that you have to make in order for certain functions to work properly, such as location services for the weather and giving yourself the ability to control call functions. For someone who's owned an Android device for many years, you come to expect this, it's par for the course, but I would imagine beginners would find it a little bit irritating. Next, you're taken through to a menu screen where you can enable or disable notifications app by app. And despite thinking otherwise for most of the month which I've been testing the watch for and getting very frustrated, you can actually go back into the settings and re-enable or disable notifications from different apps. It's in a slightly awkward place in the menu system in the app, so it's probably better to get it as close to right first time as you possibly can. Once you've resolved all of these things, just scroll down to the bottom, hit begin use, and away you go, you can start using your watch. Halo claimed that the Solar Plus RT3 will receive over 100 potential watch faces. There's about 50 available at the moment and the easiest way to change them is through the face gallery section in the app. And once that's been uploaded to the watch, you've got the ability to use the top right rocker in order to select the watch face that you want. The selection in all honesty isn't that exciting. You've got sports style, chronograph, 
artistic. There's a reasonable amount of choice, but none of them really stand out. And I'm hoping that Halo will add a bit more choice to the gallery and really make the most of that bright AMOLED screen. The app selection UI, very similar to other smartwatches of this ilk, where you've got either a grid, list or tile view and using this menu is very snappy and responsive the settings section gives you quite a lot of customization you can go in and change your wearing orientation your control center setup energy saving mode theater mode do not disturb you've also got a fair bit of customization over stuff like always on display where you can go in and have it on a schedule this is very useful in conserving battery because as you mentioned previously, it's the screen usage really that eats away and it erodes your battery life. Looking at some of the individual apps, such as the heart rate here, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's as per most smartwatches where you've got a nice little graph there and it updates real time. It tells you what you need to do, whether it's keep still or adjust the watch. There's a few minor errors, such as the lack of space between resting and 70, which you can see there. But overall, it's a pretty pain-free experience. We'll talk more about the accuracy in the exercise section later on in the review, but I found heart rate to actually be quite accurate if a little bit slow to pick up on changes. The stress sensor, I'm not really sure about this. I'm not even sure what it's measuring or how it's getting these figures. It seems to think I'm relaxed pretty much all the time. And there's even been some occasions where I have been a little bit stressed and it still hasn't given me a particularly stressful score. So make of that what you will. Now, I think a lot of these features are just there as trend analysis and the stress counter I would categorize as one of those features. Sleep tracking is pretty basic, both in the app and on the watch itself. It doesn't give you your REM or your core sleep stages, but as you'll see later, and it's the same with most of the sensors, you can get more detailed analysis in the app. The pulse oximeter measures your SpO2 levels, and I found it to be commensurate with the other smart watches which I've tested really, always around about that 96 to 99% mark. The large screen means lots of room to see notifications, although they don't always seem that clear and unfortunately they can't convey emojis. WhatsApp notifications can get a little messy as well where you get a notification of new message and then you have to kind of exit that and then scroll back down again. And unfortunately, as you would expect, you can't reply to WhatsApp messages or other notifications either. Making and taking calls is pretty straightforward. If you wanna make a call, then just go to the phone section you can either use the keypad, although I didn't really have much success with this method, or you can go in and use the recently used contacts or contacts and then dial from there and it works pretty well. Taking calls is also very straightforward and whether you're making or taking calls, it's the same principle. Your voice comes through quite loud and quite clear, although it's not something I make a habit of doing very often on any smartwatch I've ever owned. Is that Reagan? Reagan Cypher? There's no ambient light sensor, so you're not getting adaptive brightness. There is a music control section, although it didn't seem to work with Spotify. And like with most devices of this ilk, dismissing notifications on the watch doesn't clear them on your phone. Those minor quibbles aside, the watch interface is very clear. It's very intuitive. Everything's where you kind of expect it to be. And whilst it may not quite give you the detail that you'll get on a Samsung or the snappiness that you get on a Huawei, it's more than adequate at this price point and is helped in no small part by that really nice vibrant display. We talked earlier about some of those prerequisites which you have to set up in the app before you can start using it, like setting unrestricted battery consumption, etc. Well, you've just seen a flavor of what I was talking about. It's not ideal, and do I wish you didn't have to do it? Yes, of course, but it's mostly wizard driven, so as long as you just follow the instructions, you should be okay. The Halo app has received quite a bit of stick in the reviews which I've read, and you can kind of see why. You've got random bits of text like just refresh underneath home at the top of the screen, and not everything is quite matured as you would want it to be. It's not quite as intuitive as you would hope, but the app is evolving all the time and Halo have improved it. There's been two releases at least since I've been testing the watch. The main screen has a card style setup, which you can go into each and just explore them a little bit further. Here you can see a specific exercise which I did. I think it was a bike ride and it details your heart rate, your heart rate zones, your mean pace, your BPM. So it doesn't give you everything that you'd want to see, but it gives you quite a bit and certainly more that you can get on the watch. You can export it into a few different apps, although that's only as a JPEG, it's not an integration as such. 
And once you're in the card, you can see an aggregated view of all the exercises that you've done within a certain period of time. It gives you a readout of how many calories you've burned in total, which is nice as a little confidence booster. And you can also filter the exercises so you can see how many times you've done mixed training or runs or bike rides, etc. Scroll further down and you'll find the sleeping card, which goes into detail on your sleep score, your sleep duration and your stages of sleep. However, don't expect Apple style statistics here. It's not going to tell you your core or REM statistics. And Apple Watches tend to be the gold standard when it comes to sleep tracking. So I tested it against the Apple Watch 7 and also the Xiaomi Mi Band 6. And it seemed to come closer to the Mi Band 6 in terms of statistics which it was giving, which indicated a reasonable sleep tracker, although certainly not best in class. However, we're talking about a $50 device. If you want more accurate statistics on your sleep, go right ahead, but you're probably gonna have to fork out close to 10 times the price to get something that is only really incrementally better. And if you just want something to give you rough statistics and give you trend analysis, then it's perfectly adequate here. And you're getting a similar level of detail here for your step counter, your calorie counter, and your SpO2 sensor. So whilst the Halo Fan app may not quite have the polish and the UX that some of the other smartwatch apps have got, for the average consumer, it's probably gonna give you enough detail and everything is more or less in the place where you would expect it to be. The app isn't buggy, it isn't especially hungry on battery life, and it's a work in progress. I'm sure it will continue to improve in the future. Halo claim a whopping 105 different sports which you can track through the watch and they're not wrong when you scroll through you find all sorts of weird and wonderful exercises like jump rope, steeplechase, darts, kite flying, even tug of war is in there. It can be a little bit confusing sometimes if you're doing sort of mixed indoor training do you go for sit-ups do you go for a hit because you're doing a combination of all those different things my advice is just go for the easiest one really because the difference in algorithm isn't great in fact i would be surprised if there's any real difference at all it's more from your own tracking perspective and understanding what you're doing over a certain period of time and having the ability to be able to find that quickly and easily within both the app and on the watch itself with a lot of smart watches you're constrained by having to go into the app to find a record of all your activities but it's readily accessible on the solar plus rt3 and it gives you quite a bit of detail as well most users will be looking for how accurate they are when it comes to measuring your runs and your bike rides here we see an example of a run which I triggered from the watch rather than using the app. Note, if you do this, it won't use the GPS sensor in the phone. For that, you do have to trigger it from the app. The 4.09 miles, which you see on Strava, is approximately 6.58 kilometers. The Oppo watch using Wear OS on the right is there or thereabouts. It's just shy at 6.44 kilometers. The Halo Solar Plus, very similar to the Xiaomi Mi Band 6, comes in a little way short at just under 5.4 kilometers. This isn't unusual. It's one of the reasons why runners look for GPS in a smartwatch. And you'll note when you use GPS through the app, it's a lot more accurate at 6.55. It's bang on exactly what Strava measures. And if you look back at the heart rate from the previous comparison, you can see that the sensors do take a little while to get going, but they are actually quite sensitive once that change has been detected. I run pretty much the same circuit once or twice a week, so I know roughly what my heart rate is going to be. And throughout all of the smartwatches which I've tested, it tends to be somewhere between 157 and 165. Halo is slap bang in the middle of that cross section, so you'd have to assume you're getting reasonable accuracy here. In terms of calorie counting, it's reasonably accurate compared with Google Fit. Here you can see in a jog on a treadmill, Google Fit was aligned to my Techno Gym profile measuring 67. The RT3 comes in at 76, although I think that is partly down to being able to go a little bit more granular on your weight and height in Google Fit. Looking at the heart rate measurements, you can see that it's pretty much aligned with Hey Melody and Google Fit here, averaging out at 71. Looking at outdoor cycling, and again, there's good parity with Google Fit. Unfortunately, I left the Oppo watch running for a little bit too long, so it's counting me running up the stairs as move minutes. Ignore that. If you ignore that and look at the other metrics like the calories, the heart rate, etc., then again, there's some good parity here. 
For step counting, it's reasonably accurate to I measured that my steps should be somewhere between somewhere between 5,200 and 6,800. I know that's a pretty big gap, but it was using a number of counted averages over various distances. You can see Google Fit counts way over. It must be taking steps from somewhere else. Hey Tap Health is probably the least accurate. And then the Solar Plus RT3 is somewhere in the middle and not far off what I calculated it should be. Again, I think it's just that it's not quite sensitive enough when it goes from doing nothing to then doing something. Maybe that's when it doesn't pick the steps up. Finally, when we're assessing distance accuracy when running on the treadmill, for this one kilometer run, the Halo scored around 82%, whereas the Oppo scored just 67%. And you can see that without being able to rely on that GPS measurement, it's pretty inaccurate compared to the Halo. So that's definitely something in its favor. So overall, I was pretty impressed. You're getting a reasonable amount of accuracy across all metrics, really. You're not gonna get Garmin levels of accuracy, but you're also not getting Garmin levels of price. For $50, I think it's a very respectable level of accuracy and pretty much comparable with their competition at that price point where you don't tend to see wild variations in levels of accuracy. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my review of the Halu Solar RT3. For me, it's a very credible option in that budget smart wearable space with decent build quality, a fantastic screen, extensive fitness tracking options, and pretty decent accuracy on the sensors too. A good interface and some nice additional features like the ability to make and take calls and basic integration into Google Fit. The app UX could do with being refined a little bit, but Halu know this and have been constantly improving it for quite some time it certainly shouldn't be a showstopper but if you're looking for the ability to make contactless payments or use gps on board the watch then unfortunately for you that will be also be careful with the battery life it is possible to get between 7 and 14 days but make sure that always on display is off feel free to give me your thoughts on the halo solar rt3 in the comments section below and please give the video a like and feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed it and you want to see more from me in the future thanks again for watching it's reagan cypher signing off